the dead architect of this American Ferry Building. My name is Woody Edward Woody. Woody, to be paid business advice. And if you now follow me, I am now going to lead you through the past into a much more exciting and brighter future of Merseyside. Follow me, time travelers. Yeah, with Beat in the Mersey, we actually wanted to emphasize the importance of the musical influences that obviously eventually shaped the Beatles. I mean, most people, and of course the city bears testimony to that, most people think in terms of Liverpool and four mock tops. But what were the actual kind of musical influences which shaped John Lennon? What were the kind of main drivers that obviously resulted in Liverpool exploding in terms of the 1960s and Mersey Beat? And I think what we've done in Beat in the Mersey is to redress what was a kind of lopsided presentation of Merseyside music because although they're magnificent, there's a disproportionate emphasis on the Beatles. So we were trying to go back and I think if John Lennon was alive today and we had some ghostly interviewing techniques, he would acknowledge that kind of influence of the Irish, that influence of African-American music. Twist and Shout is a classic example. And I think that what we're doing with Beat and the Mersey, with wonderful musicians like John O'Connell, and with all the dancers, they really bring alive what those kind of musical influences were. And so to that extent, I think it's been a very successful attempt to try and look, if you like, at the prehistory of the 60s, because the 60s needs to be seared into people's consciousness, but it started a long time before the 60s. And it started way down at the riverside. My background obviously being uh, the Liverpool Music Awards, an event like this is so important. It explores the history of music in the city from pre-Beatles era, so kind of how that even evolved um, to do with the fact that we are the, one of the biggest ports and the shipping and trade and how that influenced sounds that came from the city. So it's really important and I think it's really important that as part of the IFB, music and culture are kind of some of the key events, so it's brilliant to see it. Let the music continue to raise your spirits.
Yeah, that was really interesting. I didn't realise how many sort of old blues licks that the Beatles took. Yeah, you know, that was a surprise. And certainly, um, what was the tune? That one, that was a surprise to hear that. Um, yeah, it's very educational. It's great. Halfway to paradise. So near, yet so far away. Well, I think everybody's heard of the Beatles and the internationally famous group. Uh, being a lot of tourists into the city, but I'm more interested in you know how they ended up with that sound. You know, and I think a lot of people would be interested in that story because the Beatles is the middle of the story. This is the beginning of the story, really. Yeah, today's gone really well. You know, everyone seems to enjoy it. You know, and I think the very fact that it's you have uh, actors. Uh, and actresses and, and music and it comes alive and we're trying to get this story and the history of the city to come alive and don't think there's anything better than music and, and theatre so that's it's incorporated into beating the Mersey and that's what uh, we hope people enjoyed it for. I'm singing as part of the beating the Mersey uh, thing that's gone on. We have the wonderful historian Ron Noon, who is is worth the admission price alone because he's a fountain of Liverpool knowledge, and not just all the obvious stuff as well. And essentially, what this show is about is about sort of proving or, or working out how the Beatles could only have come from this city. So. It's the Irish thing, the African slave thing, and it, it takes you through that whole journey. And it's really fascinating because, you know, it, this isn't a, isn't Liverpool great, let's, let's pat ourselves on the back sort of thing. This, is a, this has the good and the bad of Liverpool, you know. So that's what it's about, really. <laughs> Seaport, it, it's an incredibly musical place and the thing about huge seaports like Liverpool is they've got more in common with each other than they have with the, the countries that they're actually in. So there's people in Liverpool who are more, you know, back in the day when, the, when everybody was going to see, they, they're more familiar with the bar in Buenos Aires or Singapore than they'd ever be with Derby, Nottingham or Manchester, you know. And that's the spirit that every seaport has and that's the thing that sort of flows through this production, that's really the essence of what it's about. I mean, in terms of Liverpool, what I've been taught by Paul Russell, uh, Paolo Rosselli, as we like to call him, he, um, he taught me vastes of things about kind of the, the black music roots of the city and the importance and pertinence of it to so many people. Um, that basically, this music was going on long before we were even aware it was happening in the city, um, in terms of the, the lack of it being you know, documented, but those people like Sam Cooke, um, all these different influences that were coming over and it's something that hasn't been as celebrated and for me everybody knows about the cavern it's been hammered to death and it's wonderful it's absolutely brilliant the team there do an amazing job but um, how many people know about the, the other elements and we can bring them round to be such an important part that's what we're trying to say we're saying the beat in the Mersey came from all of those people and all of those influences it wasn't just about you know, a group of guys with, with cool air and singing songs, you know, those songs were, were going on long before and it wasn't just the influences on them, but it was the influence that came from the rest of the world that they brought to the city and then we breathed back out to various other parts. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it's a 
deeper history and, and it's vast. So we're really proud to put that on the map. It has been on the map, of course it has, but um, you know, we're, we're a city that shouts about the Beatles so much. And since uh, we, I kind of conceived the idea back in 2007, I became obsessed about, hang on, Liverpool's much more than that. We shouldn't just keep playing the same old tune. Let's let's talk about all the other things that are musically proud. And also the young kids that are coming through now are phenomenal. You have to listen to the sounds from the Lipper kids or you know, you've got the Ricky Tomlinson Media Academy, he's got some fantastic talent there. Um so yeah, there's a whole breed of people that we want to educate that don't just know about the Beatles. Well I'm bound for care for by the way. when you play your own gigs and you know I'm on a tour at the minute and to see it sort of going into a bit of a frenzy and seeing everyone singing I think that's for me when you realise that songs have connected you know and big, that's what you hope for when you, when mean, you make a record. It was the biggest step going from the last shadow puppets to, to being a solo act that's probably the biggest step.